A couple of years ago, I was with my wife at the local petrol station to fill up the car with fuel, and I was in the shop paying for a few things. The guy behind the counter serving me had an accent that I found really difficult to understand. Now I could tell that English wasn't his first language, and I tried my best to understand, but just couldn't quite make out what he was saying to me. I thought to myself, this guy probably gets a load of people being impatient with him all day long, so I'll make sure I'm extra nice. So I made good eye contact, made sure I smiled and was friendly, and rather than asking him to keep repeating himself, I just nodded along and bluffed my way through it. As I walked out of the shop, I felt pretty good about myself for being so patient and friendly to someone who probably needed their customers to be nicer to him. But then as I got in the car and told my wife about it, I said something that I don't think I'll ever say again. And I'll tell you what that was in a few minutes. I wonder what you think about racism. In fact, I don't really have to wonder, do I? I'm pretty sure you hate it, so do I. And if someone asked you if you're racist, you'd want to say, no, of course not, wouldn't you? Me too. So perhaps then we can tick this problem off our lists and feel good about ourselves. In the Bible, another guy who was feeling quite good about himself was having a conversation with Jesus. Now this guy thought he was doing all the right things in life, treating everyone well, and that God must be quite pleased with him. And so he asked Jesus, what must I do to get eternal life? He probably thought he was on the right tracks already. Jesus replies with questions and the guy gets to show off everything he knows about loving God with all his heart, soul, strength and mind and about loving his neighbour as he loves himself. Jesus said to him, do this and you'll live. Now personally, I think Jesus said this with a bit of a smile because he knew this guy wasn't as good as he thought he was. It says the guy wanted to prove that he was one of the good ones that God was pleased with and so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus tells the man what is now one of the best known parables or stories that he ever told. Here's what he said. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Robbers attacked him. They stripped off his clothes and beat him. Then they went away, leaving him almost dead. A priest happened to be going down that same road. When he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. This is the first big surprise. The guy hearing this story would have thought a priest might have been the hero of a story like this, but he's not. Jesus continues, a Levite also came by. When he saw the man, he passed by on the other side too. Another big surprise for the guy listening. He loved and respected Levites, but the Levite isn't going to be the hero of Jesus' story either. Who's it gonna be then? But a Samaritan. What? A Samaritan? I'd love to have seen the guy's face as he heard this part of Jesus' story. He was a Jew, and Jews at that time looked down on Samaritans and thought God had no time for them. They weren't part of his plan. Oh, Samaritans, he must have thought. I don't like where this story is going. But a Samaritan came to the place where the man was. When he saw the man, he felt sorry for him. He went to him, poured olive oil and wine on his wounds and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey. He brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two silver coins. He gave them to the owner of the inn. Take care of him, he said. When I return, I'll pay you back for any extra expense you may have. The guy is stunned. The Samaritan of all people is the one who ends up being the hero of the story, doing the thing that others should have done, but didn't, stepping up and showing compassion above and beyond what was expected. Next, Jesus asks an obvious question, but it's one that the guy doesn't really want to answer. Which of the three do you think was a neighbour to the man who was attacked by robbers? The authority on the law replied, the one who felt sorry for him. Jesus told him, go and do as he did. In other words, so you think you're good enough to earn eternal life with God? Well, try this on for size. The guy had been feeling pretty proud of himself, but Jesus 
wanted to show him his blind spot and that he was still a man in need of forgiveness and help from God. More like the guy in the ditch than the hero of the story. And I think that's the point. As well as having things we know that we've done wrong, we also have blind spots. As good as we might think we are, there are ways we fail that we aren't even aware of because we haven't thought about them yet. As I got back in our car at the petrol station, I told my wife about how friendly and patient I had been with the guy in the shop whose words I couldn't really make out. And I said, surely he must have realised by now that he needs to slow down when he talks because people are struggling to understand what he's saying. You know, I think I'd realise and make more effort if I was him. Blind spot. I was judging a guy I'd met for two minutes in a shop. I hadn't stopped to think about the various very good reasons why the guy in the shop may well have been doing his absolute best in that moment to make himself understood. I didn't know how long he'd been learning English or if he was still working hard to learn the language. I didn't know his story or the challenges he'd faced in his life so far or even the challenges of his day so far. I didn't know how many others like me had been smiling and nodding along as if everything was fine and then grumbling about him after they'd left the shop. I didn't know. And rather than stop to ask questions and listen longer or just assume the best about a person because I don't know them, I'd started making a judgment about them. Have you ever done that? Now I'd like to say that as we drove away, I didn't spend the next five minutes trying to prove myself right, but I did. I was more like the guy who spoke to Jesus on that occasion than I realised. Rather than acknowledging that I might need to learn something, I tried to justify myself. Have you ever done that? My hope is that this assembly video makes you realise we can't just tick racism off our lists and say we've cracked it. We don't know what we don't know. As good as we might think we are, there are ways that we fail others that we aren't even aware of. So that means we should never stop learning about other people's journeys and experiences. It means we need to be quick to listen and slow to speak, quick to understand and slow to judge, even in our private thoughts about people. And as imperfect people who regularly get it wrong, let's be honest about our need for forgiveness and help. We might like to think we're like the heroic Good Samaritan in Jesus' story, but maybe we can also be like the guy in the ditch in need of help. I'm going to finish with a prayer. Feel free to talk to God with me if you want to, or just listen if you'd prefer. Father God, I thank you that you have created every human being with equal dignity, value and worth to you. I pray that we would learn to see people this way, fight racism wherever we find it, and never stop learning to love our neighbour as we love ourselves. Amen.